Our King and Savior now draws near. Come, let us adore him. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Malachi. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, And like fuller's soap, he will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver until the present offerings to the Lord, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old, and as in the former years. The word of the Lord. Please join me in praying Psalm 16 responsively by half verse. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come with his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior. Born in the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies. He promised to show mercy to our fathers. And to his holy this was the oath he swore to our father Abraham. To set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. To give his people knowledge of salvation. By forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from high shall break upon us. 
to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death. And to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Philippians. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Eturia and Trachonitis, and Lysanias ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. 
and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Prepare the way of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our gospel through John the Baptist declared, prepare, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth. History and tradition suggest that that was an actual statement. The crier would go out before the caravan with the king in it and, and warn the people, the king is coming. Prepare the road. It's been in disrepair because of winter or floods or what have you, too much use. And so they would go out and they would flatten the road and make it smooth. Prepare the way of the Lord. Everyone well understood what John was saying, and they understood as well the idea behind what he was saying, he wasn't talking physically about going out and grading the gravel. He was talking about our hearts. He was talking about the movement of God. He was talking about how it affects each of us and all of us. Prepare the way of the Lord. Prepare. I would suggest to you that the preparing action is exactly what the vestry and indeed the entire parish has been doing and is in the middle of doing even now. Last year, you will recall, the vestry shared what it was doing, how it was developing strategic plans, and in essence, they had begun the work of preparing. Three strategies were introduced, and for this entire year, each of those strategies have been fleshed out and researched and amended and enhanced. Portions of those strategies are at the stage of being implemented even now, while other portions are yet off in the future. But the work, the work of preparing continues. As part of our annual meeting, you will hear from each strategy as they step forward and, and offer updates and previews of coming expectations as we together prepare the way of the Lord. I need to say how, really, how impressed and even proud, if that's not sinful in this sense, of the work that the vestry has been investing and accomplishing this past year. They have researched, they've checked parishes from across the country in their pursuit of preparing St. Philip's for the future, both immediate and long-term future. And even now, members of the parish are becoming involved and bringing the plan to fruition with their time and their talent. It's moved beyond just the vestry. Indeed, the entire parish is doing so. All of you are doing so through your stewardship of treasure. May we continue to prepare the way of the Lord. 
You will recall that last year, we also talked about the growth that's coming to Brunswick County and to our area right here in Southport. One only need drive by my home to see the incursion of growth that's taking place. And I'd like you all to consider this reality. Each of you are likely either an eight o'clocker or a 10 o'clocker. Very few of you float between services and even fewer of you sit in a different place than where you normally sit. <laughs> but because you sit where you sit and you come when you come, you probably do not have a feel for the change that has been taking place in the parish. The staff know it firsthand. The clergy are acutely aware of it. And while the eight o'clock service likely has 50 to 60 people attending, and the 10 o'clock likely has somewhere between 130 and 150 attending, and the Celtic has somewhere between 20 and 30 attending, that adds up to between 200 and 230 or 40. But we have an estimated 400 active parishioners, or members rather, at St. Philip's. Here's how we arrive at that number. Last year we had just over 190 pledges. Most of those pledges represent a family of two. Now some represent a single person. However, there are also those in our parish who are regular, faithful, and generous givers, but they do not pledge. And so, we believe that that number coincides or offsets the single members who do pledge, and therefore there are approximately two people for every pledging unit at St. Philip's, which means we have nearly 400 active members. Because those who give generously and faithfully to the church are also active in the parish. The reality is that we are a demographic that is mostly retired, and we travel, and we have family. We go and visit family. Family comes and visits us. And as we get to this age in life, I say this including me, we begin to have not just kids, but grandkids. And so there's multiple visits that are coming and us going. We have responsibilities that keep us away from church on Sundays at times. I can't tell you, and I get this from Debbie, I can't tell you the last time that we had the entire choir present during a service. And I can't tell you, and I get this from me, I can't tell you the last time the entire vestry was present at a service. It is a reality that we in Southport live with. We understand people travel and people have family commitments, and things take place at this time in our life, we are free to do these things. We're not tied down to a, a job every day. And there's nothing wrong with this. But don't believe for a second that our parish is only as large as the service you attend. And so we must prepare the way of the Lord. In the first part of May, I began my sabbatical, three months in length. The diocese and the vestry both want to make sure that their clergy remain healthy, and so they offer this opportunity, not only to rest, but to have the chance to recharge batteries and to strengthen and heal our soul and spirit and have that precious time to just focus on and be with family. And you all know that my sabbatical plan was to walk across Spain to make pilgrimage and enjoy the presence of God at the altar of earth, sea, and sky in the Cathedral of Creation. And we did that for exactly three and a half days. At which point, Sue fell, broke her ankle, and you know the story. You also know that while Sue was in surgery in Pamplona, Spain, my daughter Rachel and I were in the waiting room and at that very time, I received a text from Faye Gibson. The Gibsons used to be parishioners here. And she said that she and Maitland were with my mom just moments ago 
when she died. The pilgrimage, of course, ended. We came home to the U.S., and we made our play to Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where Rachel lives, and there is excellent and available orthopedic care. And we completed our sabbatical in Eau Claire, where Sue healed, and where my Camino was not one of walking, but one of resting, one of sitting out on the deck, one of prayer, and one of wonderful conversation and time with my family. I was renewed and rested and recharged. Truly, we are preparing the way of the Lord. While I was away, Lisa announced her her decision to leave St. Philip's for another parish outside the diocese. And I'm so very thankful to all those who picked up in my absence to ensure that St. Philip's continued to prepare. Canon Jim, Deacon Pam, a visiting priest or two, and most especially the wardens, wherever they are, and the staff. They sacrificed so much time and talent to ensure everything continued without a hitch. You really can't understand all that they did unless you were there and you had to do it. They continued to prepare the way of the Lord. (laughs) As an aside, they kiddingly and jokingly said, well, we won't burn the church down while you're gone. (laughs) But they came doggone close with that lightning strike fried our equipment. The fire department said we were most fortunate that the building was still standing. And upon my return, the staff explained to me that they understand why the lightning struck the church. I said, what do you mean you understand why? Because the steeple, right? And they said, no, it was Canon Jim. He was here for that, and he was here for for Hurricane Florence. Whenever he's here, (laughs) God acts. (laughs) So I returned at the beginning of August, and with Lisa gone, we began an immediate dialogue with Bishop Rob for us to temporarily hire Deacon Pam, not as a deacon, she's assigned here as a deacon, but hire her as the director of pastoral care. This would be a temporary hire until such time as we hire a new assistant priest. I have received nothing but rave reviews and words of appreciation for the work that Pam has invested in pastoral care. Many areas of ministry are being reinvigorated and expanded, and there's even new ministry, new ministry areas that are beginning. Pam, you are going to make a fine priest. There's much more taking place in the area of parishioner care, and during the annual meeting, Strategy One will speak to that, for they are preparing the way of the Lord. Growth in our community is coming. We must prepare the way of the Lord. The demand for spiritual care is growing, and we must prepare the way of the Lord. The opportunity to gather and worship will continue to grow, and we must prepare the way of the Lord. We need to reach out and bless the least of our brothers and sisters during this time, and we must prepare the way of the Lord. And we need to keep our focus on Christ. This has never been more important, for we must prepare the way of the Lord. The call of Scripture is clear to us. We are called to live together in unity even as we grow And so we must prepare the way of the Lord. There's one last item I want to mention as we prepare the way of the Lord. That's the columbarium. There has been chit-chat about it and conjectures made and assumptions made. And I want you to know that I am excited to know that the columbarium team has been working for months and months doing research. They've interacted with a great number of churches both local as well as across the diocese and points beyond. They've worked diligently 
and teamed with professionals, an arborist, landscaper, architect, with detailed experience in columbariums. And they have advised us that certain locations that we thought were good are simply not possible because they will ultimately kill our oak trees. And places are simply not possible because the space would be too limited for interments. The columbarium team is working with a true professional, and together they will be offering a presentation after the first of the year that will provide information and possibilities, as well as entertain questions and bring answers. It's a time for the entire parish to both learn more and to have the chance to offer questions and input. The unfortunate and sad reality right now is that no one, no one who does not already have a reserved spot in the old memorial garden, you cannot be interred at St. Philip's. And without a columbarium, loved ones will, out of necessity, need to be buried at other locations, not at St. Philip's. And so we need to prepare the way of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, Scripture is clear. May each of us and all of us do everything possible to continue to prepare the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Standing together, let us declare what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For our president, for our president-elect, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, 
for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us exchange a sign of peace with one another. Did you say the peace of the Lord? Yeah. No, they got... Oh, you blinded. Peace, and thank you. Good morning, St. Phillips. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. I got blinded by the light and forgot what, where I was. <laughs> Several brief announcements. Next Sunday at 5 o'clock will be Advent Lessons and Carols. Next Sunday, 5 o'clock, Advent Lessons and Carols. Flowers. There is one of these available in the narthex. If you don't already have one and didn't already fill one out, you are invited to do so and offer a poinsettia to the glory of God or in thanksgiving or in honor of someone who is a loved one. Uh, this is the last week. I think you'll be able to do that, so please act accordingly or act promptly or, or, or grab one on the way to lunch today. Following the final hymn today, there will not be a dismissal. But the choir will have processed out or recessed out, and the altar party will have made our way out. And as we do that, we're going to go change. And you all are going to stay where you are unless you need to use the restroom real quick. Stay where you are because the ushers are going to be helping set up tables and chairs. The vestry, this year's vestry, would please come and take seats at the tables. And then we will come back out as soon as we're changed, and we will begin the annual meeting where we will elect delegates, we'll elect vestry members, we will get a report on the budget, and rector's crosses will be uh, awarded, as well as some other business. So please stay. Following that then, we will make our way into the parish hall where there is a wonderful sumptuous feast awaiting for us. Kim, do you have any announcement or any instructions on how to do this? Are there two sides of the table to go on? Two sides, of the table. two sides of the table, so you can split once you get to the table and do your thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, ministry in focus. Clark, where are you? Right in front of me. I'm Clark Sizemore. I'm here to uh, 
invite everyone to the uh, Men on a Mission Christmas dinner. It will be held Tuesday, December the 17th at 5 p.m. And you, your spouse, and children are invited. And uh, we will, uh, there is a, a cost $20 for adults, $10 for children, and RSVP by December the 10th, which is Tuesday, to Bill Happer. And the, uh, his contact information is in your service leaflet. Thank you. My understanding that that dinner will be a meat and a vegetable lasagna, and there will be other goodies and beverages that are available. It should be a wonderful time to just sit, fellowship, and manja. So do take advantage of that. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Chicago. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Glory to God and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, that the last day brings with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder that we will process out during the final hymn and then we'll come back in as the ushers set up tables and we will immediately begin the annual meeting. So if you need to use the restroom, do so quickly and make your way back uh, for our meeting. May he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. Amen.